So 2017's total solar eclipse over North America is almost upon us. Uh, I've been out practicing with some equipment, doing some more research, scouting locations, and I wanted to do a little follow-up video to my photographing the total eclipse uh, video with just some things that I've learned along the way. I wanna talk about equipment, I wanna talk about safety, I wanna talk about filters, and I wanna talk about the importance of practicing a little bit. Uh, one thing right off the bat, in my earlier video, I recommended using a 10-stop filter like this Solus 3.0 10-stop neutral density filter if you're not gonna have a dedicated solar filter, which is kind of of limited utility except for photographing the sun. One of the nice things about neutral density filters is they'll protect your sensor from the sun, but then they're really useful for doing long exposures and all kinds of photographic applications. Well, most of the camera manufacturers and a number of people have come out saying, 16 stop is really the safe bet for the eclipse, especially if you're gonna be using a longer lens, filling the frame and, and running your sensor with uh, live view for a while. The 16 stop is a sure bet for saving your sensor from any damage from the sun. So I'm gonna amend that earlier video, say a 16 stop filter is probably the way to go. Uh, and I'll put some links up to this. Hoya uh, sent me a Pro ND 5.0, 16 stop neutral density filter to, to play around with and I've been using it with some adapters I got an 82 millimeter, which is the same size as my widest uh, You know filter mount on a, on a lens that I have and I found it works really really well So that's one thing for protecting your sensor I can't 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 reiterate enough if you're gonna be looking up at the Sun at all Utilize either really strong gray welding glasses or get these cheap eclipse glasses. I've got a link to Amazon. They're, they're easy to grab. You know, they look a little dorky like you're in a 3D movie, but you can look right up at the sun safely without damaging your eyes. And these are a great help. You know, I slap these things on, get the camera on the tripod and, and just get it kind of lined up where it's pointed pretty close to dead on the sun. Another thing that really helps, you know, once you've got it kind of close to lined up, you're going to use live view. You slap your 16 stop neutral density filter in front of your, in front of your camera to make sure you're protecting the sensor. You flip to live view, keep a baseball hat on because it's just going to protect you from that sun beating into your face while you're looking up at the live view. Um, I found that I liked working with my Nikon D500 a little bit better than the D810 because it has an articulating screen and I could tip that out and have it pointing in a different direction. So I'm looking straight into it and the sun's coming down into the camera. You know, that artic art articulating screen is really, really nice for just angling into the eclipse and not looking up into the sun all the time. But a baseball hat with a brim is a really, really nice thing. The 16 stop filter is great. You go into live view, you can focus it on the back of the camera, you can get your, your composition set up. And you know, there's really two main ways that we're gonna think about photographing this eclipse. Either you're gonna use a long lens, try to fill the frame and get that corona and go, you know, a whole bunch of stops. I would say that it, you know, ISO 100, uh, it say, you know, F11, you're probably gonna want to, to bracket around say a 15th of a second during totality, as many stops as you can, two stops apart. So if you, if you think about maybe seven or nine steps of bracketing with 15th of a second in the middle, a lot of people have been asking me for what's the proper exposure. I'll also set up a link for those people that are really into getting that, that close up of the eclipse. There's a great website, uh, Mr. Eclipse, and I'm gonna put that in, in the comments. That guy has a great little tutorial on all the kind of formulations for what you wanna to do to capture the eclipse in its totality. My interest lies a lot more in capturing a cool landscape at the moment of totality with stars, the eclipse. I still wanna bracket that landscape so I have shadow detail and I have the corona and the sun. They'll be a little smaller in the frame, but I want them kind of in the context of the landscape. I wanna capture the place where I am. And you know, I still haven't decided, am I gonna be on the coast? Am I gonna be on the east side of the mountains in the desert here in Oregon? Am I gonna be in the mid Willamette Valley? And a lot of that's weather dependent and I'm still kind of scouting scenes. But there are four main lenses I've found that work really well for me without a lot of ghosting or flare shooting into bright conditions. They throw nice sun stars if I want with the partial eclipse just to kind of set it off in the landscape. And I've been practicing that by just using anything like a building, a mountain, any kind of structure that's creating a shadow line at about the same time as the eclipse is gonna be with the sun at about the same height in the sky. And just finding that shadow line setting the camera and tripod up so that that shadow lines right across where the camera is in the shadow of the camera. 
And then, you know, using the same technique I just talked about, you know, use these eclipse glasses, use your 16 stop filter, use the, the live view in the back of your camera, just get it, your camera moved into a position where the sun is partially obscured. You know, I've done it out here with my studio, the roof of my studio blocking half of the sun and, and then practice with stopping down, overexposing a little bit and seeing how the lens handles sun stars. Does it give a lot of ghosting? Does it give a lot of flare? Or does it kind of mess the image up having that bright point source? Cause it's not going to do a very good job during the partial eclipse if it's doing that for you right now. And you can test that just using a shadow line. And I'll just say that from my research, the lenses that have been working really, really well for me are my Nikon 14 to 24, unfortunately. That doesn't take any filters, so it's not gonna be of great utility to me. Um, instead, I've been using this Tokina. It's made for APS-C for a smaller sensor format like my D500 11 to 20. This has about the nicest sun star of any lens I've ever used. A friend of mine has one. He was doing these videos and photographs with these incredible sun stars. So I got a hold of one. Absolutely love the way it performs throwing sun stars. And it does a really jo good job with just not ghosting and flaring. So it's going to be nice for this eclipse. Uh, I was testing out some other Tokina lenses. And this one for Sony, this is a new series that they've got for the Sony E-mount. The uh, Firin 20 millimeter, it's a manual focus lens, really nicely made, beautiful lens, just kind of in every application I've used it on. It does also a really nice job with low ghosting, low flare, really nice sun star. Um, my Zeiss 35 F2 is another lens that I like a lot. It's done a really good job and in tests with the, uh, which is kind of testing for the eclipse, it's done a nice job. And then the other one that I really like is my Nikon 50, 1.8 uh, and that lens just does a great job throwing sun stars. It can get a little ghosting and flare if you get too much point source light in it, but I think it'll be nice as the eclipse gets closer and closer to totality. And you know, I don't know which ones of these lenses I'm gonna use until I get to the location that I've chosen for sure for the eclipse. And some of that is gonna be weather dependent. You know, I would suggest you pick a number of places where you're gonna be for this eclipse and keep an eye on the weather and be flexible. You know, if you're choosing to be on the coast and you see a big marine layers coming in for that day, move inland. Uh, if you're gonna be on one side of the mountains and you see that it's supposed to be cloudy on that side, drive over to the other side, car camp. You know, get into a spot where you have the best possibility of seeing it. Um, I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with capturing a long lens image of this. I'm gonna use this Nikon, the latest version of the 300 F4, partially just because it takes a filter. It'll work really well with the 16 stop neutral density and it's razor sharp, it's lightweight, it's nice and easy to use and it works well with a teleconverter. So I've been practicing with this. It's done a really good job. There's nothing wrong with going for that close up of the sun and I think I'm gonna have two cameras and just make sure I get one image of that. Again, you're gonna wanna bracket. I think the landscape shot is a little trickier. It's still gonna take a lot of bracketing it's a little bit of more of an artistic decision based on what the landscape that you're photographing is. That's the shot that excites me. I think there's gonna be a whole lot of close-ups of this eclipse. I don't think it's gonna be a rare image. I think that you're gonna be more differentiated by finding an interesting landscape and going with a, a sort of a medium wide to medium shot with the eclipse in it and an interesting landscape. You know, some cool foreground, some cool background and then the eclipse happening, maybe some stars during totality. That's what excites me. Uh, anyhow, so the biggest point I think there is, is get out there, practice, use your equipment, get comfortable with it. The sun is there right now. It's easy for you to play with. Just make sure you protect your eyes with good eclipse glasses or welding glasses, protect your sensor with a good 16 stop neutral density filter. Get out there, practice, and particularly practice in the couple days before the eclipse. It's happening on a Monday. There's no reason not to take that weekend and practice for it. Make sure that you know what you're doing at the hour that it's happening and that you have the place that you wanna be, what lens you wanna use, and you know how to use it.